Welcome back to another video. We're gonna see how we can convert an STL file to a CATIA solid part. So this will be the case study. As we can see, this will be a mini case. This is a mini case for the DE10 Nano. I will also put the link over here in the video description. So if you wanna follow along, you can download the file as well. As we can see, this was created by the following user over here. Now, I already have those files loaded, as we can see over here within downloads, and this will be the bottom case. Now, within Katia, to get started with this reverse engineering, I will first do, let's say, the default approach, which will be to make use of Digital Shape Editor, since this is the workbench that will import STLs. But as you're gonna see, there will be some slight changes to the workflow. I will not use the, the default one. So I will go to import. I already have the file loaded over here. So I will just click apply. And as we can see, we're gonna have that STL loaded. Now, since this is an STL mesh, it will be triangulated. And as we can see within the visualization, we're gonna see some of the triangles over there. If I will swap the visibility over here and I will go shaded with edges, we're gonna see that the model will look like this. So we don't see the triangles over here, but if I will jump over here and go to the wireframe, we're gonna see that for each rounded elements, we're gonna have those small elements that will define the, the circle profile. So we're gonna see how we're gonna convert those. Now I will jump to shape to quick surface reconstruction because I just want to show you how poorly this feature will work in this uh, for this model. Even though the model is not complex, but it has those those circle elements that are quite a struggle for this uh, automatic surface. So I will go to the tool automatic surface. Afterwards, I will click on the mesh, and I will just click preview with the default settings. As we can see, the mean deviation is set to 0.1 millimeters. The surface detail was um, around um, 8,132 elements, and I also have a target ratio of 90. Now I will leave, Ka I leave Katia to process this. This will take a little bit of time. And as we can see, we received the following um, error that we have a computation limit over here, and that the specific mean surface deviation of 0.1 cannot be achieved using those parameters. Now, if I will click OK, and I will click OK once, once again. If I will hide the original mesh, we're gonna see the converted, the automatic converted surface will look like this. So we see how poorly Katia tried to, to replicate that. So this will not be the workflow that will work for this part. This is mainly for preform elements. For example, you're gonna do a 3D scanning of an object. And you can use the automatic surface in some cases over there if you have an organic shape but this is mostly a prismatic parametric model so automatic surface is not the way for uh, for this okay so let's see how we can approach this differently i will go to file i will create in this case i will create a new part even a product so file new product i will click ok and over here on the product i will right click and i will say that i want to insert an existing component for this one so go down to components we're going to find existing components and in this case we're going to see that i will select the same file so this will be an stl file the v3 bottom if i'm going to right click go to properties we're going to see that this will be the same file so the file format will be an stl I will click open and you're going to see that now the model will be loaded like this. So if I will expand the product over here, we're going to see that it will not show anything over here. So this doesn't have an, um, let's say, a product tree over here, it doesn't have any history. It's just a simple element as an STL file. In order to generate some history for the model so we can work with some surfaces, I will need to convert this mesh. So to do that, I will go to start. Afterwards, I will go to digital mockup 
and we're gonna search for demo op optimizer so this will be the workbench and over here i'm gonna use an offset i already have a similar video regarding this one of the most popular videos on my channel so i just need to create an offset for the selected part which is this one and the offset will be set to zero i can hit preview we're gonna see that katia already processed this and now i can go to save and i can save this file so the file format available for this will be cgr we're also gonna have the universal wrl the model file format and the stl but since our purpose is to create a model that can be used um, within katia and it's not stl because stl can also be used but as we can see STL files have problem with circular elements. I will save this as a model type. I will hit save. And afterwards, if I will minimize this, I will go to the following folder where I had that saved. We're gonna see that now Katia saved this following file. So this will be a cut model. If I'm gonna double click on this within the same Katia instance, we're gonna have this open. But the workbench that this is open, as we can see, we only have some features over here. So what we have to do, we need to save the master file for this. So I right click on the master, I will go to copy. This will copy the features of the, of the model. And now I will need to create a new part. So I'll go to file, new. In this case, I will create a part, so not a product. I will name this by default part two. We can leave the hybrid design if you have um, if you have that enabled. And I will right click now and hit paste. So the master part that I just copied previously, I'm gonna have that pasted over here. We're gonna see that Katia will process that. And after after the update, we're gonna have the following four surfaces over here. So as we can see, this is currently in red because it's waiting for an update. I can just go ahead and um, have that updated. It will swap to, to the green. And now we're gonna see the top surface over here. If I'm just gonna hide that, we're gonna have the following smaller surfaces over here. So if I will also hide the second one, so not reframe, hide the third one and the last one. So mostly all the geometry over here will be present within the, the first one, which is this one. And uh, now if I want to convert this to, to a solid part, I will need to swap the workbench. So I'll go to start. I will go to shape and I will go to generative shape design. Over here, I'm going to search for the join feature over here and I will select that I want to join all of those four surfaces. I can leave the merging distance to 0.001. I can click OK and we're gonna see how Katia now swapped the color of the model. So green was the STL loaded as a component. Now we're gonna have the, um, the yellow color which indicates surfaces in Katia. I will also go over here and change the shading like this so we no longer gonna see all those lines that define the model if i will expand the join one we're gonna see that we're gonna have a merging distance over here if i will start rotating around the model we're gonna see how that surface will look now since this has been started from an stl file katia will do a little bit of um, lagging as we can see over here and now the final process would be to have this converted to a solid part. So to do that, I'm gonna go, when I say solid part, not solid works, I mean solid part body. So I'll go to start, mechanical design, part design. And over here, I will search for the close surface. We also had this with generative shape design, but that will give the final model a different color. So if I wanna make this part design, we're gonna see that we have a warning. So the current um, in-work object is on a body. We can just hit OK. And now I can select the join over here. I can click OK. And we're gonna see that over here within the part body, if I will expand that, I will now have the closed surface. 
So if I will hide this join one, which is the, the surface, underneath it, I'm going to have that, that part body model. The only drawback using this is that um, it will be a little bit more complicated to, to do an assembly of this, mainly because by default Katia will not recognize the axis over here properly. Since this was not purely created uh, using parametric uh, elements such as padding, revolve and so on, it will be a lot more trickier to have those assembled. But keep in mind that this model now is a solid body and um, you can start work on it or even if you want to do some changes you can define a new plane on top of that and start working with it if for example i will do a section cut over here i will change a different align plane and we're gonna see how that will look so i have the possibility to go up and down and we're gonna see that we no longer have a mesh so we no longer have an stl if I will um, hide that and make only the surface vi visible, we're going to see that uh, that model will not have the filling on the inside. But this one will have, since this will be a closed surface. Okay, so within my following video, I will do the same with Fusion. And we're going to see that Fusion 360 X actually has a little bit uh, of an improved workflow for this. We can have those converted and we can easily change, for example, the, um, the extrusion distance of that surface over here. Over here it will be a little bit, a little bit more trickier. We need to define a, a new sketch over there and even a plane because by default we're going to see that for me the planes are hidden. But if I will make that visible, if I will make a plane that will be offset from this, in this case, this will be 20 millimeters. Let's just go somewhere like 50, maybe even 60 to be a little bit above that. I can click OK. I can now jump over here within that newly defined plane. And um, yeah, I can go, for example, over here onto that circle and I can create a new circle. Again, since this will be a polygonal model, we're going to have some problems not only with aligning, but also centering the circle around that circle. Since Katia will not recognize that as a, as a feature, so we're not going to have that axis. And as you can see, it will also struggle with the processing. Even now it's still thinking, okay, we have a new circle position over here on the top. And it's just pending for that, even though the radius is 2.721 in this case. But it will eventually process that. So this is the main disadvantage if you want to do some reverse engineering on this kind of parts within Katia V5. Okay, so we have that defined. But now the problem is that if I will select this circle, I will not be able to make it um, concentric with the other circle since that has been converted so i'm gonna need to do a little bit of eyeballing or there are some other tips and tricks that can be applied over there now if i will leave this sketch and i will try to do an extrusion again we're gonna see katia will slightly struggle a bit and we're gonna see some not responding but keep in mind that it will always um, recover from this so we have that recovered and I can do an extrusion. As you can see in this case, I'm a little bit above that. So I can just extrude that, for example, for five millimeters. I can click OK and we have the newly added geometry. There are other methods to add the plane directly over there. And I have some videos regarding that. So consider to check my other videos if you want to learn more about um, this, this type of workflow in Katia V5. But also other software since I, um, I also make use of Fusion 360 and uh, SOLIDWORKS for, for this. Okay, so I hope you find this video useful. I will position a similar video on the left side and the subscribe button to the right. So that's it. Thanks for watching.